Mãe. Greetings in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say to you, Merry Christmas? I know it's next Sunday, but can I say this is Christmas week, the week that it all took place, that Jesus was born. How did he come that we may have life and have life more abundant? Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes. I love the Word of God, and every Wednesday night, I have more time just to settle down and pour myself into you. I love studying the Word. I've loved preaching the Word. And on every Wednesday night, the Word of God just explodes. It's probably one of the most powerful services of all week long. Make your plans to be with us Wednesday night at 730. God's got a Word for you. I invite you to be with us every Friday morning at 1030. Miracles are taking place. I want to pray for you. I have time to prophesy, minister to you. Be with me every Friday morning at 1030 where God is doing some awesome things. All great things are happening right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. You don't want to miss every Friday morning. God is doing great things. And this is an awesome week. Awesome week when we're, the whole world is talking about our Jesus. Think about it. I, I, you know, I know even people that don't even believe in Jesus is talking about Christmas. Even people that don't even believe in Jesus is buying gifts for one another, which represents the gift that God had given unto us. Oh, it's an awesome week. Make your plans to be with us here today. Three great services. That is 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and 6 p.m. today. And then Wednesday night and Friday morning and Saturday night is the candlelight service Praise and worship candlelight Christmas service. Oh, it is awesome. If you've never been in one of the, uh, the Christmas candlelight services, you need to be here on Christmas Eve. That is Saturday at 7 p.m. And the next Sunday, oh, two great awesome services at 10 a.m. Hallelujah, it's going to be an awesome day. Somebody said, you go to church? Hallelujah, that's Christmas Day. Why should we not go to church? It'll be at 10 and at 6. Make your plans to be with us here on Christmas Day. It's going to be an awesome time. Oh, you uh, wouldn't it be a shame that you had a birthday party and you had a birthday, hallelujah, and nobody showed up for your birthday party. Make your plans to be with us next Sunday. Uh, awesome time right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. We're excited what God is doing into the preaching of God's word at this time. To me, I want you to look at somebody and say, God's been really good to me. Oh, no, no, no. You need to say, God has really been good to me. Are you already in the book of Job chapter 1? If you're in the book of Job, chapter 1, shout, I got it. The Bible tells us in chapter 1, there was a man in the land of Ur's that his name was Job. Perfect, upright, one that feared God. And he shunned the, ev the evil. He had sons and daughters. He had so much stuff in verse 3 that, you know, that he was the greatest man that was in the east. And, and then it tells us a story all the way down to verse number 12, or you know, verse number 9, that the Bible says, Satan answered you know, the Lord and says, uh, you know, I've considered Job, but uh, uh, you know, verse number 10 says, but you have a hedge around about his house. He said, but let me put forth my hand and touch him, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord, oh, I'm going somewhere this morning. I feel the Holy Ghost right up in here. Now, God is changing some things in my spirit from what I was going to do. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself you put in the, forth not your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when the sons and the daughters were eating together and drinking in the elder's house. And there came a measure unto Job. Y'all hear it. And the oxen were plowing besides them. The enemy come in, and uh, in verse 15 closes and said, I am the only one to escape. I'm the only one to escape. I am the only one. Hear what he said. And while he was yet speaking, fire fell out of heaven. And it fell upon the, on the sheep and the servants, and I am the only one that escaped. And while he was yet speaking, the Chaldeans came and, and fell upon the camels and, and slew the service. And, and behold, I am the only one that escapes. 
And yet while he was yet speaking, another one came, his sons and daughters were eating and drinking in the house. And behold, there came a great wind and from the wilderness and smote the four corners, and it fell uh, upon the young men, and, ex- and I am the only one to escape. You may be seated. Whenever I begin to read this, you have to stop and ask yourself the question. You're the only one in your house that escaped. You were the one on the street corner, and all the other guys are in jail or dead, but you escaped. You were the one that, how did they said that was, was the least to secede in school, but you escaped what the devil said. Some of you need to stop to realize this morning that what the devil come to destroy, but yet you escaped. You should have lost your life, but yet you, sh- but you escape. Oh, somebody need to get excited this morning because you understand that you're the one that God brought you out. And he said, I am, in verse 19, and I am the only one to escape. There's some of you in your family that, of your own siblings, and you're the only one that ain't strong out on drugs this morning, and you escape. You, there's some of you and we're in your family today that you know, they live in all kind of crazy life, How do you, but you are the one to escape. There's people in your life today, in your neighborhood, that, how do, that you still hung up in the hood, and, but you escape. There's some of you, you know, how do, you was doing wrong and, and you was doing evil and, and, and you, you didn't get caught. You didn't go to jail. But the others went to jail because you escaped. I'm laying the foundation this morning because I'm going to work this thing until I get to where you are. You were messing around with people in the world and come to find out one of them had HIV, AIDS, and you messed with them and you dealt with them, but you escaped. Oh, you hear what I'm talking about this morning. Then if you escaped... You have to ask the reason why. Why did I escape and the other ones die? Why was it that uh, why was it that I I escaped when you was in your mama's womb and all those seeds were f- flowing through uh, 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 and you're throwing through the channels and, and all the hundreds and the thousands of the seed that was flushed out of the body, but you did not go out through the uh, your flesh, uh, but you uh, was uh, fertilized, uh, and you was the only ones uh, that God ex- uh, uh, you caused the birthing to come. There is a reason why that you are here this morning. There is a reason why uh, that you escaped uh, what you went through in your life. There's a reason why you didn't lose your mind. Uh, there's a reason why you didn't die in the car wreck. There's a reason why uh, you didn't die on the battlefield. Uh, there's a reason why God has a purpose and a destiny for you don't you just think when I was big bad and tough oh no God said I have purpose for you so therefore I have to come and tell you this morning I am a survivor but more than a survivor I am an overcomer through the blood of Jesus Christ I survived what I went through I can't stand here this morning and tell you I survived drugs but I never took drugs so I can't I, I don't understand I don't understand all the meaning but I can tell you that God he kept me from them and there's some of you that God kept you from some things that you couldn't have handled you couldn't have handled it's what other people handled uh, and God brought you through when you go through a storm in your life and this world and this world is full of people that's gone through a storms in their life ask yourself the question why why am I here today why uh, what is my purpose on life what is it what is it for me to do it's not just to breathe it's not just to eat it's not oh, There's a reason why that God brings you to a place like this. There's a reason why, and I'm talking to people today by internet, by television. There's a reason why that God sustained you when you should have. Well, pastor, you don't know what it is. Oh, I've been shot at, not because I was robbing a bank. Oh, I knew some of your eyeballs got really big that time. Hallelujah. I, I, I I wasn't running out of somebody's back door. Somebody was breaking into my mom's dad's house when I was 18 years old. 
Uh, and Brother Alvin can remember the days that, you know, that people used to take my dad's family because of, of this church being built and the people in the neighborhood, they'd be, you know, they would arrest my dad. How do you and I remember me and a, you know, one of the brothers went out there one night and how do you, and, you know, some guys started shooting at us and, and I heard the bullets. But you know what? I made it through and I escaped. Why? God knew what he was going to do this day in the year 2016 that I would be here to pray for the sick, to heal the sick, to raise up the dead. He knew what I was doing. When I was 18 years old, I got hit by a semi-truck, not one time, but three times in a little Volkswagen. And the only window in the Volkswagen that was not destroyed was my car. You know, it was the driver's window. Everything else was almost cut in half. It was pushed in where the semi-truck's tire rolled out of it. And I got out and walked away without a stretch. Why? Why was it? Because God knew what he was doing this day. And some of you have the same testimonies. You should have been dead. This is where the Holy Ghost is changing my, son, my whole word this morning. Oh, yes, there's something different that, you know, that I was going to speak. But the Holy Ghost is changing something in me. Because some of you thought that you just made it. Because you were so smart and so slick and so clean. And oh, no. No, no, God said, I preserved you for a time as this. I kept you for a time as this. I kept you steady when the other boats was wrecking. Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 23. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8, in the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse number 23, because you, whenever you begin to study this and read this, and when he entered into the ship with his disciples, followed him. See, the Bible begins to tell us that Jesus was there. And whenever he got into the ship, and behold, there came a great tempest in the sea. Insomuch the sea, the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Why was it that Jesus could sleep in the middle of a storm? Think about it. How is it that Jesus could sleep? And there was waves that was overshadowing the ship, and the, and the water was coming in. And the disciples came and woke him and saying, save us, we perish. Now, you know, the good news is the disciples knew who was on the boat with them. If you don't know who you're fellowshipping with, if you're not walking with Jesus Christ, how are you going to go and say, hey, Jesus, I'm over here? Uh, see, the disciples knew who he was, but yet they really didn't know everything who he was until after his death and his resurrection. And it said, verse 25, woke him and said, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? Why did he say this? Why are you so fearful? He picked them, all 12 of them, he picked them one by one and says, follow me. Why are you fearful when I give you the power that I've already given you? Why are you fearful this morning, church, when we have already survived what the devil had? We already overcome the weapon that was formed against us, and God called us, and he gave us the ability to use his name. He said, why are you fearful today? So here we are headed towards this election, and why can we stand here and say we're fearful? We are called by God, chosen by God, and God brought us out of what we've been through in the past. You don't think he brought you out, and you survived, and you were the only one left for God to let your life to be destroyed now. Oh, no he kept it so this apple said to him said to him why are you so fearful O ye of little faith O ye of little faith he arose rebuked those winds and the sea and there was a great calm in other words why did you wake me up to do what I give you power to do why did you get me up from my catnap whenever I've already given you power that you can speak to the thing? You've already overcome drugs that should have killed you. You already overcome the sins of the world. And now since you got saved and born again and washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, why are you fearful? If you was not fearful of the drugs 
and fearful of the, the, uh, uh, the devices of the world. Why are you fearful now? I give you my power. I give you my name. I give you my authority. And if I go away, I, I want you to know this morning. And I just stopped by to tell somebody in the middle of the storm you're going through. You made it through the addictions. You made it through the storms of life. You made it through. And he asked the disciples this question. Why are you fearful now? Don't you know who you are? Because you are a child of God. You've been washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't you know that you have a authority and power hear what he said in verse 26 why are you fearful oh you of little faith and he rose and rebuked the wind and there was a calm and the men marveled what manner of this that even the wind and the seas obey it first of all we need to understand Jesus was in the ship with them if you don't have Jesus in your life who are you going to call on who you going to call on? They used to with kids coming up there. You know, the Ghostbusters said, who you going to call? Who you going to call? Who you going to call? Because the, you know, the Ghostbusters will come. I got somebody before the Ghostbusters. I got somebody who busts the ghost. And his name is Jesus. I got somebody who busts every fear in our life. His name is Jesus. And he asked us a question. Why are you fearful? And why are you afraid? Why do we get afraid? Of words that people say to us the Bible said faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God if faith comes by hearing fear comes by hearing Job said the thing that I heard the thing that I feared, it is now overtook me the thing that I was afraid of now I begin to be captive to the thing that I give my my soul and my life to is now is controlling my life Paul or, or the David said in Psalms 55 and 8 I would hasten my escape from the windy storms and the tempest. He said, I really want to get out of this. This is terrible. And he begins to say in verse number four, the sorrows of death has come past about me and the floods of the ungodly men make me afraid. The words that people speak make us fearful. You say, not me. Well, you go to the doctor. You're going to get quiet right here. I don't care how big, bad, and tough you are if you don't have God and faith in you. You go to the doctor, and the doctor say, I see some little brown, black spot, gray spot right over here on your lung. As a matter of fact, I feel this in the Holy Ghost right now, that the devil's fighting somebody with fear of cancer in your lung because of some little spots. Cast that, give that imagination now. You are a child of God. 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 You overcome drugs. You overcame the weapon of the devil. You can overcome any weapon formed against you. He says, because of the ungodly man has made me afraid. The doctor will look at you and say, you know, it don't look good. Oh, now. You say you ain't, you ain't afraid of nothing. Now you get fearful. But Isaiah said, who shall believe our report? He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the touch time is, on, is laid up on him, and by his stripes that we are healed. So therefore, when you know who you are, this has been in my spirit all week long, knowing who you are. See, Jesus knew who he was. Therefore, he didn't have to worry about, can he speak to the wind? He told the disciples, disciples, if you knew who you were, where's your faith and why you're afraid? Why you're fearful by what you hear? Because what you hear is only temporarily. What you've been seeing is only temporarily. David said it like this in Psalm 17 and 12. Woe to the multitude of many people which make the noise like the noise of a sea and to the rushings of nations and that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. He says, we hear all this rushing. We hear all the fear on every side. But God said, I did not give you the spirit of fear but of power and love and of sound mind. I want to go back to it. You already made it through every weapon the devil had formed against you. You already made it through drugs. You already made it through adultery. You already made it through the sins of your past. You already made it out of the world. You already made it out of the claws of the devil. And now we're going to stand as a child of God and shake and tremble. I don't know what we're going to do. i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to call on the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every devil has to back up. At the name of Jesus, every weapon has to move over. At the name 
name of Jesus. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Hear what it says. I hear the noise. Somebody say the noise. Have we not been hearing noise? We've been hearing noise at the doctor's office, on your job. What, you're about to lose your job. How do you, as, as my daughter said, she wasn't supposed to be able to work, but God put her back to work. And he says, like the noise of the nation, which of the seas and the rushes of the nations, that make a noise like a mighty water. Verse 13 of chapter 17 of Isaiah. I, Isaiah in your 17 and 13, it says, the nations shall rush like the rushes of many waters. But God shall rebuke them but God shall rebuke them but God shall rebuke them what did Jesus do that made the disciples feel y'all I hope y'all get what I got in my Holy Ghost and God begin to give me this word right up here this morning how did, he said Isaiah said when you begin to hear all the noise and all the troubles just like Jesus rebuked rebuke the wind rebuke the rain rebuke the storm and they was like come hear what the bible tells me isaiah says in chapter 17 but god shall rebuke them he said i will cause them to shut their mouth i will cause them to fall and i'll cause you to rise up i will cause every tongue to cease and i'll cause blessings to be in your house i will cause them that speak damnation against you and prophesy your doom for them to fall in the same pit to hang in the same gallows he said hey, if my people would you call by my name with the hum of the step and pray he said I will heal the nation I would heal the land they shall flee far off I'm speaking properly to someone right now people in your house and on your job they still waiting on you to fall she going back to that drug she going back to that street she going back she ain't gonna make it i know it's been 21 years but she go still gonna fall keep on doing sabers watching because you're gonna see god raise us up in this end day you're gonna see a revival of what used to be drug addicts what used to be prostitutes, uh, what used to be alcoholics, uh, what used to be adulterers, uh, what used to be liars, uh, what used to be cheats, uh, what used to be thieves, uh, what used to be nobody had nobody, and they were living on the street. Uh, God said, I'm going to raise me up a holy nation. Uh, I'm going to raise me up a peculiar people. Uh, it's going to be a called out one, a chosen one. Uh, it's not that you happen to be where you are. He said, I chose you. I chose you. You know, whenever you have a baby, you can't help what you get. But God looked down and said, I'm going to give me some children, and I'm going to choose the ones that I'm going to pick. This is why he was saying with the disciples, disciples, why are you fearful? Simon Peter, I knew you was tough. Simon Peter, I knew when you were a cusser. I knew you would flash that switchblade. I knew that you would, you did what you were about, and I called you. Did become fishermen of men. And now you're getting afraid because of a storm? Simon, you was raised on the Sea of Galilee. A storm should not bother you. You were a fisherman. You was raised in the elements of this world. And why does a storm bother you now? Why are you afraid now? Some of you was raised on faith, raised in church. Your mama taught you, your mama taught you how to believe God. Your granny taught you how to believe God. And why are we going to tell God now? He said in Hebrews, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord thy God, the change of not. Hear what he said. I'm going to rebuke them. They shall flee far from and shall be, shall be chased as a staff of the mountain before the wind. The staff is, is like grass. It's the outside part of the wheat. It blows real easily when the wind blows. He said, those people that's come against you, I'm going to chase them as far as the east is from the west. And like a rolling thing before the whirlwind, he said, I'm going to take you like the grass you see on a western movie i'm gonna just cause that uh, yet that grass to blow away from you but pastor how is it gonna happen when you know who you are 
when you know who you are when you know who you are when you know who you are but pastor what we got to do in matthew chapter 7 verse 25 it says we got to build our life not on sand he said but you got to build your life on the solid rock foundation of knowing who you are i come by this morning to stop to tell somebody know who you are know who you are know that you're washed with the blood of jesus christ Oh, I don't care what the devil's, yeah, he meant for evil towards you. God said, I'm about to turn it for your good. Well, Pastor, it's a troublesome time. God works big in troubled times. God works big in messed up times. God works big in times of famine. God works big in the middle of the night. He held back the wind for the children of Israel all night long. Until the children of Israel made it across on dry ground. And God said, I've been holding back the night all night for you. We've been may endure for even. Yo, I would just prophesy to you, tell you this morning. If God had not spoken, he, he, he was not. He's not re- are we excited what God is doing? You don't want to miss this week. Wednesday night, Halle at 7.30. Friday morning, Miracle Service. I know it's Christmas week, but that's the reason why we should come and worship. It's Jesus' birthday. And then Saturday night at, uh, on Christmas Eve at 7 p.m., a candle night, a candlelight praise and worship service. And then two great services on Christmas Day. Yes, we're having church on Christmas. It is his birthday. You've got to come and worship God on his birthday. Worship Jesus Christ, the Son of God, on his birthday. It will be at 10 a.m. and at 6 p.m. Make your plans to be with us here at the Paxson Revival Center Church as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Until we see you here today, right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church, may God bless you and be with you.